Hello and welcome to Success Tips Global. It's June the 27th, 2023. And I have the great pleasure of speaking with Dr. Satoshi Sano. Welcome to Success Tips Global. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to, to participate in this uh, meeting. Thank you. Great. My first question is, what is your current job title? Yeah, I'm a space engineer and researcher at the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or the JAXA. Wow. <laughs> How long have you been in this organization? I have been in JAXA for 21 years, since wow. 2002. Hmm. And uh, where did you grow up? Actually, I grew up in the countryside of Yamanashi Prefecture in Japan until I was 18 years old. It's very countryside, so it takes two and a half hours to reach the nearest train station on foot, but only three minutes to reach the nearest mountain, Minami Alps Mountains. So that means it's a very peaceful area. Very, very interesting. Now, let me ask you, what was life like in your childhood? Yeah, the Minami Alps is a very beautiful area with peach and cherry blossoms and majestic mountains such as Mount Fuji, Yasugatake, and Kaikoma Gatake. So the water and the air in this region are exceptionally clear. I frequently visit those mountains to drink water, do some fishing, and to gather mountain vegetables with my grandparents. Moreover, my grandparents also owned a vegetable garden, and mm. I often assisted them after school with tasks such as cultivating, watering, and harvesting. And during my junior high school years, mm. I worked as a newspaper delivery person for three years. Mm. This required waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning, every morning. Regardless of rain, snow, or typhoon, in the event of typhoon, it was particularly challenging to protect the newspapers from heavy rain using my own body. Hmm. In winter, the temperature dropped to minus 10 degrees Celsius, making it very difficult to manipulate my own, my own hands. However, I persisted in waking up every day for three years to deliver up newspaper in Minami Alps area. The experience of delivering newspapers helped me develop resilience and toughness. Very, very fascinating. So as a child, what did you aspire to be? Actually, when I was a child, my idols were professional baseball players like Bas, Kakefu, Okada, as well as comedians like the Drifters and Beat Takeshi. As a result, I as aspired to be a baseball player or a comedian. Mm. Then during my school years, I joined the baseball club and the Rakugo club. Rakugo is a Japanese traditional entertainment uh, art. Okay. And uh, what were some of your favorite subjects in high school and what kind of circles did you belong to? Yeah, I liked mathematics and enjoyed reading mathematics books such as Mystery of Pi or Gift of Euler. As I said, when I was a student, I belonged to a baseball club and a Rakugo club. Mm. Now, in Japan, the years before university are said to be very, very intense. What was your experience like in preparing for university? Yeah, some parents are actually eager to have their children enter university. And some people start to prepare for university as elementary school or junior high school students. Mm. However, my parents didn't have such plans. Therefore, I was not pressured to study hard, but I was strongly recommended to contribute to the community in Minami Alps area. Mm -hmm. As a result, I started newspaper delivery, and initially, I didn't prioritize my study. But mm -hmm. fortunately, I liked mathematics, and my test scores in mathematics were good. As a high school student, I started studying mathematics hard. Once I discovered the tips of studying mathematics, I applied a similar method to other subjects. Mm. And gradually, I began achieving good scores in other subjects. Well, mm. as a result, I could get into university, fortunately. Okay, now, uh, could you please talk about your undergraduate university experience? Okay. Actually, I studied anthropology. 
Anthropology is a field of study that explores human genetic and uh, cultural changes. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there are many memorable classes, so I introduce something. For example, one of the most memorable classes is monkey observation in Monkey <laughs> Mountain. Identifying individual monkey is one of the fundamental skills at the Monkey Mountain in Nagano. Nagano Prefecture. My professor taught us a tips of identification, which is after the monkeys and try to <laughs> identify one monkey and another monkey. Is this Taro? No, it's zero. Taro has a scratch on the right face, not the left face. <laughs> oh, is this Hanako? No, it's Masako. Hanako has a red line on her hip. <laughs> Once we could identify individual monkeys, we could understand deeply something of the culture of monkeys. Mm. And as I introduced the most memorable class yeah, that is definitely a uh, primate anthropology. Mm. A researcher who usually lives in Malaysian jungle with orang utan came to Japan to give a concentrated lecture during the mm. summer season. While most teachers were formal suits with nectar in class, mm. Only these teachers were aloha shirts. <laughs> As a greeting, while most teachers said hello, but th this teacher said cuckoo <laughs> in monkey language. If we were feeling ashamed, the teacher scolded. Don't be ashamed. If you saw, you cannot go to the jungle. <laughs> and we would say cuckoo in every class. We also learned the monkey language and to say coo, coo, coo. That means the snake is here. What? Coo, coo, coo. That means hawk is here. Mm. And the final class was a visit to a zoo. We talked to monkeys by saying coo, coo, coo. I felt very shy <laughs> because there are many visitors in the zoo. The most surprising was that the teacher was able to have a conversation not only with monkeys, but also with mandolins. Wow. He started drumming on his chest, <laughs> finally expressed love. For the female mandolin. <laughs> and surprisingly, the female mandolin was so excited, responding, Uki, 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 Uki. <laughs> amazing. I thought that's, of course, professional. Mm. Okay. Now, what made you decide to pursue graduate studies? Yeah, actually, I wanted to really know the mysteries surrounding human beings, mm. such as what is human, where we came from, mm. what is the difference between humans and the monkeys, and what is our destiny in the future. To express those questions, I use mathematical principles and computer simulation methods to mm. calculate the rate of human evolution and other related factors such as culture. Sometimes I face challenges in mathematical equations, but I asked my fellow student in the same department or professor about the alternative calculation methods, including mm. probability and statistics. And another aspect, uh, except for study, uh, when I was an university student, I was into Rakugo performance, as I mentioned mm. before. Rakugo is a Japanese traditional art from improving dialogue between two people. For example, oh, I'm worried about my habit between my fingernails. Uh, the growth of my nail is too bad. Oh, you express nervousness. So please take up a yoga to <laughs> feel relaxed. And one month later, oh, your fingernails are growing normally. Is it the outcome of yoga? <laughs> yeah, thanks to yoga. My foot can now reach the back of my head. And I started beating the nails on my foot. Chan, chan. This is Rakugo. Uh, Very interesting. Rakugo, I can develop my humor skills and abilities. Great. What was your PhD thesis about? And why did you focus on that topic? Actually, my PhD thesis focused on human evolution on mm -hmm. interstellar travel. I had a curiosity about what would happen for humans if humans spent much pure generations in space. The space environment is very different from the Earth, such as high radiation and zero gravity, which inhibit the impact on human evolution. Hmm. 
Okay, now you got a PhD in space anthropology. What exactly is that? <laughs> yeah, space anthropology is a study of human evolution in space, mm -hmm. but a study of what will happen biologically and culturally. Okay, so what was the process like to find a job after completing your PhD? Actually, after getting the master's degree, not the PhD, I started working. Then I got the PhD after finding a job. Oh, I see. Okay. So what were the first few years like? Uh, did you go through an orientation program? How was it? Yeah, actually, uh, because my major in college was biology, so I was engaged in biological space experiments at first. Mm. And I learned many things from my colleagues, various books, and academic papers. Okay. And uh, what are some of the experiments you've been involved in at JAXA? Yeah, actually, uh, I engaged in an international space station program called mm. ISS. ISS presents a range of unique environments, such as microgravity, space radiation, vacuum environment, enclosed environment, and seeing stars clearly. Among these, microgravity has a profound impact on various materials and living organisms, including humans. Mm -hmm. For example, gravity pulls your body fluids down on the Earth. However, in the absence of gravity in space, these fluids do not move downwards, and your legs get very slim. Mm. But please care because body fluids move upwards, <laughs> causing facial swelling or the moon face. Mm. Using utilizing those unique space environments, medical researchers have endeavored to investigate the mechanisms of bone loss in space to develop novel medicines for osteoporosis and so on for elderly people on the Earth. Mm. Actually, okay. there is no gravity in space, mm. and also there are no convection currents and sedimentation, leading to high-quality crystals in space. Mm. High-quality protein crystals are needed by pharmaceutical companies, and high-quality semiconductor crystals are needed by electrical companies, and so on. And special space board decided what experiments should be conducted in space, such as Gluten crystallization, protein crystallization, or osteoporosis disease uh, experiment, and mm. so on. Mm. Okay. Now, uh, what are some surprising or interesting results you've got from your experiments? Uh, yeah, actually, a surprising impact. Yeah, mm. actually, space experiments are always amazing and surprising. But uh, yeah, oh, because it, it is a, a actually frontier experiment, mm. but success is not guaranteed. Sometimes we encounter surprising failure, not always success, because it is absolutely frontier for humans in mm. space. All trials are fast done in space. No one can predict what happens in space. Mm. For example, in my protein crystal experiment, at first crystals could not be grown where in space, or it was grown on the Earth. An unpredictable phenomenon and the microgravity caused a digital leak. Ouch. Nevertheless, we never gave up, and thankfully, pharmaceutical companies are always rooting for us. Mm. My desire became so strong that I got a good crystal in my dream at night. Wow. Eventually, the dream came true. Mm. We got high quality crystals in space. Congratulations. <laughs> and these crystals are analyzed on the earth by pharmaceutical companies to develop new medicines. It's mm. an amazing story. Now, some people think it's a waste of money for governments to invest so much in space programs. What is your answer to such people? Yeah, some people say that, but it's very difficult, actually. Politicians have to make difficult decisions regarding policies and budgets. However, achieving an ideal budget balance that satisfies everyone is impossible mm. because each person wants to prioritize different areas such as healthcare system, pensions, education, industry, research, and space exploration. As for space exploration, you have to consider the long story history. Mm. Early organisms migrate from the ocean to the land. Then, 
animals could inhabit the land as we have it today. Likewise, early humans migrated from Africa to all over the world. So I am here thanks to such pioneers. So I aspire to venture into space as a pioneer for all future generations and for all life. Superb. Okay, so now let's talk about travel, some of your travel experiences. How much traveling have you done in connection with your job uh, that we haven't talked about yet? Yeah. Yeah, as part of a business trip, I have visited Russia many times and the USA a few times and other countries such as China, Spain, Greek, and so on, France. Typically, I go to space agencies such as NASA and the Russian Space Agency and such as uh, sometimes a launch sites such as Baikonur in Kazakhstan that came from Russia, Moscow. Mm. Now, can you talk about some of the interesting places you've visited and some of the experiences you've had? Actually, interesting places is uh, for my private trip. I introduced mm -hmm. my private trip, okay? As a private trip, I went to cannibalism village in Malaysia about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. That was an amazing trip, actually. But it is a safe area because one or two generations ago, they could cannibal culture. They enjoy drinking alcohol like Japanese double rock mm -hmm. during the daytime every day. What a luxurious life. And it was a, I was recommended to drink the double rock. <laughs> At first, I was so scared to drink mysterious double rock. But once I drank it, the double rock was so delicious. <laughs> After drinking double rock, I was introduced to the room where I would stay. Surprisingly, <laughs> there are a lot of human bones and the scars on the shelf in the room, which is a legacy of cannibalism. It seemed that if I slept, I would never wake up. <laughs> so I didn't want to sleep, but the double lock made me sleepy. Don't sleep. Don't sleep. But then the double lock quickly made me sleep. But don't worry, I could get up in the morning. Mm. And another surprising thing is that I noticed that in the morning, there are no bus, no shower, mm. no laundry, like the space station. But there is abundant water in the river. River is actually bathroom and toilet and swimming zone and used for fishing. River is a toilet, but the water is very delicious. Mm. I learned many things at the cannibal village. Very amazing trip. Wow. I learned that uh, you are a weekend farmer. How long have you been a weekend farmer? Actually, I have been a weekend farmer for over 10 years. Mm. And what got you interested in it? One day, my wife suddenly told me to start a vegetable garden. Why? I had never tried such a garden after that in Tsukuba. But my wife's reasoning was that children usually don't eat vegetables. But if they grew their own vegetables, they would eat the vegetables. Mm. At first, my wife said she was the main person in charge of the farming. But after the first farm activity, she said, I understood today, farming in his muscle, this is a man's job. Oh no. <laughs> and I reluctantly became the main person in charge of our farm. However, it didn't take much time until I became absorbed in the farm. Farming is a hard work, including cultivation, watering and weeding, and the hot, harsh conditions. Mm. However, as a result of our hard work, we feel that vegetables are exponentially delicious. Wow. Natural vegetables have astonishing, fleshy taste and unbelievable sweetness. So then let me ask you, what kinds of crops do you grow? Yeah, actually, over the past decades, my family has been cultivating over 100 different types of vegetables, wow. such as tomatoes, cucumbers, watermelons, strawberries, sesame, pumpkins, peppers, sweet potatoes, and various others. Okay, so the food must be delicious, but besides the food, what do you get out of the experience? Yeah, farming is not about the, only the food, about the food, but also mm. about the experience, actually. Touching nature is particularly relaxing. 
Digging in the soil and the blue sky, I feel like a child again. My mind is free from the stress of modern life. I'm able to recognize my connection with the earth and beautiful nature. Mm. My sons love digging in the soil, observing various insects and animals on the farm. The soil of Ibaraki is perfect, particularly to cultivate sweet potatoes and sweet babies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've known you to be a great communicator. How important is communication in your job? Yeah, actually, effective communication skills are crucial in space experiments because each space experiment is a big project requiring collaboration among various people, such as researchers, engineers, astronauts, flight directors, government officers, and foreign space agencies. So it is essential to have a clear understanding of each person's needs, roles, and backgrounds and provide information accurately using scientific terms, appropriate political words, and a comprehensive understanding of foreign cultures. Hmm. So then, what efforts have you made over the years to try to improve your communication skills? Yeah, actually, to enhance my communication skills, firstly, I prioritize respecting individuals and understanding their roles and backgrounds clearly, and listening carefully. Okay. Now, you've worked with people from many different countries. What makes it easy for you to get along with people from different cultures? Mm, actually, uh, to use local language is very important. Mm. For example, I frequently went to Russia, and at that time, I used Russian language, such as, Spasiba, Zdrostopiche, Paka, and watching <laughs> and uh, greetings and smiles, smiles are also important. Perhaps the essential things of communication are taught in elementary schools, such as greetings, smiles, and showing respect. Mm. And uh, also uh, humor prompts effective communications. I learned humor through Rakugo and comedy shows in Japan. Mm. So, and humor is also important point in communication skills. Great. Well, I learned that you attended the International Space University. And so the question is, what exactly is the International Space University? Yeah, International National Space University is actually located in Strasbourg, France. It was founded in 1987 mm. as a non-profit organization that offers a one-year master's course and a nine-week special course and one-week executive course. And each course provides interdisciplinary classes uh, in various fields, such as aerospace, rockets, satellite, and astronomy, or space business, space law, space security, and more. Very interdisciplinary. And I participated in the executive course this March. Okay. And who gets to go to this university? Yeah, the students participating in the master's class are eager to work in the field of space, such as space agencies, space companies, and some institutions, which are their uh, tw twenties. But the students participating in executive course as part to spread knowledge related to space or to develop new space businesses, usually 30s, 40s. And so specifically, what was your experience like? Uh, yeah, yeah in, in International Space University, I learned many things. Actually, when I was a university student, I only learned biology, as I mentioned, uh, as anthropology. <laughs> and however, most JAXA people learned aerospace or engineering during their university education. So I dearly wanted to learn aerospace systematically, and the International Space University provided me with a comprehensive lecture on you know, rockets, satellites, space law, business, and more. Finally, I feel I could be a space engineer. And another wonderful aspect is that International Space University attracts students all over the world, mm -hmm. usually 40 countries or more, a diverse range of professions, including founders, investors, engineers, lawyers, military personnel, startup entrepreneurs, and more. Mm -hmm. 
deeply inspired by each person. Everyone has an outstanding experience mm -hmm. and passion for space. The network is extremely strong. I'm now able to get the latest information on space through this network. Mm, great. Okay, what advice would you give to a young person who is interested in pursuing a science career in general? Yeah, science career. Yeah, actually, to pass your science career, uh, it is crucial to have strong curiosity and uh, continue taking action. Once we investigate something, we often encounter novel discoveries. Mm. And the conventional tools are sometimes not adequate for investigation. So we have to pioneer new methodologies. Then to continue considering and taking action is essential. Mm. And then what advice would you give to someone who is interested in pursuing a career in something space related? Yeah, space related. Actually, it's the uh, same in science career, but uh, mm. especially in space career. When I started my career about uh, 20 years ago, space related work was only conducted by space agencies such as JAXA, NASA, Russia Space Agency, or academic institutions in the world, basically. However, Nowadays, an abundance of space companies and startups have emerged globally, so it is expand the opportunities to get space-related jobs. Okay, and my final question is, what advice would you give to someone who has no clue what they want to do with their life? <laughs> yeah, actually, I believe the key aspect lies in trying not only what we want to do, but also what we can do. Through these trials, we become aware of some points to be improved and gain a better understanding of our preferences for the mm -hmm. job. Therefore, the crucial point is the number of trials conducted. So to continue taking action is essential. Wow, you've really, really taught me a lot <laughs> this evening. So let me say a big thank you to you for taking the time, Dr. Sano. I am welcome. I also enjoyed to talk with you and I'm very happy to share my opinions for young people. Thank you. Thank you very much and bye for now. Goodbye, see you. Bye-bye.